Hi, I'm a PC. And I'm a Mac. You know, I've always wondered what life without walls would feel like. Well, Microsoft will show you, my friend, with the new Windows 7. Take it away! Well, Matt, maybe you can tell me what life without walls is all about. Sure. So, so life without walls is really interesting. In a lot of situations, when we look at the way that people use machines, they tend to have you know, distributed personas. In addition to that, you know, from that persona wall, we want to break down the, the wall between online and offline as well. We're just going to go and start this up just to show you how we've gone ahead and improved some of these areas of functionality. And a lot of customers sort of said to us, there are some key areas they wanted to focus on. And one of the key areas was make it work well. Okay. You know, and so this is one of the big areas we focus on was startup times. Because in, in the past, a lot of people complained about how long it took to actually start up an operating system. And then you'd hear stories about people saying, I turn my PC on, I walk off and do something else, yeah. come back and it's ready to go. Okay. Now we can pretty much get it up and running very, very quickly on the machines. Oh, that was quick. Yeah, and very, that was pretty quick, yeah. very, very fast. Uh, we see this sort of startup performance on netbooks, on notebooks, a whole range of PCs. So if I have like a Windows XP and Windows 7 rolls, rolls, rolls about, I can just buy Windows 7 and put it on my Windows XP? Yeah, I mean you can, you can basically go, I've, I've taken a, an old Pentium 4 machine which was you know, built when XP was around. Yep. I've taken that machine and installed Windows 7 on it and had no problems with performance well, whatsoever. All the drivers were basically picked up, um, straight away out of the box was great performance. So. So there's this opportunity, especially in these economic times where people are really conscious about buying new hardware. They can take their existing hardware and upgrade and get a whole range of new functionality um, with Windows 7. We'll just log on here. Just, just blocking the fingers so people don't get the password. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the, the Windows 7 environment um, and, uh, and we're running here Windows 7 beta. So if, you're, if you know your fish, this is actually a beta fish. Okay. So like, a bit of a joke oh, okay. from the uh, development team here. What you can see here, if you've seen Vista before, it's not a dramatic departure from the interface of what Windows Vista was. If they've used a previous Windows operating system, it should be very, very familiar to them. They should be able to use it very, very easily. And we've done things such as enhancing it by actually enabling you to go and have shortcut capabilities. Now, Messenger is obviously a really good one because people use Messenger all the time. And there's lots of key bits of functionality that people want to go and use. Here we can see it's all the different jump lists or jump actions. Now, just to give you a comparison of how to go ahead and achieve the same functionality normally. Now, let's say I wanted to go and, and tell people that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm busy, don't bother me right now. Mm -hmm. Today, you have to go ahead and click on this show menu, you go to file, you go down to status, and then go to busy, right? Yep. So it's about four or five jumps down the line. We click on busy, we get the desired effect. Now what jump list enables to do is get that same functionality in one click. So if I go ahead here and right click, I can just basically click available. There we go. And it's okay. done. Right now, you'll see lots of these little tweaks like this because we, we, I mean, we look at this and between us, what, took two seconds to go through the menu option. But do that by every time you do it, every day, during the month, the time actually adds up. And it's all these little tiny tweaks that we do that make it a lot simpler for people. In the past, when we actually used Windows Live Messenger, it was very static. What we've really done here is to go ahead and have a greater level of personalization. What you can see here is me <laughs> sort of playing around with, hey, uh, with the camera functionality. What are you there. doing? <laughs> exactly. Hey. So, and, and, this, and it's amazing that the difference that a user feels when they see a video of someone, they see the emotional, the, the emotional connection mm -hmm. with that person to a video rather than a staticky type picture. Emoticons, right? So little winks and things like yes. that. Now, because we've enabled this level of customization inside Windows Live Messenger, I can really customize these emoticons myself. So rather than just have the emoticon like that, if you watch my face, oh, whoa, I can go crazy, ahead and yeah. configure the way my actual face appears. So I can I go and configure all of these different emoticons. I didn't see that coming. Can you do that again? I'll do it again here. Yeah, so if we again. take the, the wink. Right there, right there. <laughs> the sunglasses one I had to try because that was a little fun. Okay. <laughs> It's a sick face. <laughs> and so this is where you start seeing a, a greater level mm -hmm. of, uh, of personalization here inside Windows Live Messenger. So it's very, very cool. Now what's interesting, let's talk about some of the online components while we're here. So yep. let's 
while we're on eBay, I'll show you some of the things that eBay's done to actually go ahead and have an enhanced experience inside Internet Explorer 8, you know, which is currently in release candidate and a part of uh, Windows 7. So if I go to their website here, which they've specifically configured, which is called ie8.ebay.com, what you'll see is they've done some, some feature enhancements to make IE8 do more for users. And so one of the things like we can see here is they've done two things. They've incorporated in a eBay accelerator and an eBay web slice. So let's talk first about the web slices because those are very easy to show you. A web slice is a way you can basically go ahead and take the content of a website and cut it up into pieces and use it for later. Say you're on eBay, what do you want to search for? What do you want to buy? I want to buy uh, an Xbox. 360 game. That is a great choice. What game? I want to get uh, Gears of War 2. Gears of War 2. Great game. So we can go ahead and do a search. So you'll see that this is very typically what eBay has, right? Mm -hmm. You have lots of results. But what you will notice different, there's this green highlighted around the actual items. And there's this little logo here, which is basically a web slice logo. Okay. So let's say, for example, Gears of War 2 to Xbox 360. You know, I want to go ahead and monitor this auction so if it changes, I can go ahead and make another bid. What I can do is click on the web slice logo and Internet Explorer says, hey, you want to go ahead and add a web slice. This is the name, this is where it's from. We can add it to the favorites bar. When we say favorites bar, people tend to think, oh, it's a link. Yeah. It's not a link, this is actual, actually the slice from the website. Oh, yeah. Here. When the actual data changes, it will actually bold the information so the user is instantly notified that data has gone ahead and changed on that particular bit of information mm -hmm. so I can react to it better. Yep. Rather than thinking to myself, okay, I have to, oh, that's right, I have to go back to Gears of War and check that auction, or I have to go back and check what auctions and I have. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Exactly. Yep. This now is going to be more interactive with you. It'll tell you okay. when you need to go ahead and, and make the change. The other feature we have here as well is, is the eBay Accelerator. Now, what an accelerator does is enables you to highlight content inside a page and have, again, one-click functionality from a web browser. And let's say, take you know an article here. So here we got the Panasonic, the PMA 2009. Mm -hmm. So let's highlight that. And when you highlight it, you see there's this little you know, semi-shaded logo here, which is our accelerator logo. And so if I click on that, what you can see here is a whole heap of accelerators which are predefined. Now these are ones that are built into IE8. Mm -hmm. If we go down to all accelerators, I can actually go ahead and see defined with eBay search. And so you're seeing this come up here. Oh, there's no, there's no auctions for that item right now. Let's uh, try another one. We'll try here. Uh, well, let's try. This will be <laughs> a lot more easy to find data. So we'll go to that accelerator, eBay search. And there you go, all the oh, cameras are okay. actually there and there. So you see now we don't even need to go to the eBay website. If I want a quick hit of information, I can do it very, very easily with IE8 to the accelerators. And the great thing about this is it's not, it doesn't have to be you know, a big organization like eBay to do this. Anybody can go ahead and build accelerators and incorporate it into their own website. So it's a great way of actually getting functionality. Um, in, into their websites for users. One of those other types of, of experiences which is very popular for people is the whole concept of digital photography. So I'm going to take a picture of you, so I need you to look yeah. as charming as possible. Okay. Okay, so so let's go ahead and uh, get a big smile. I'll just do what you do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is really interesting as well. Because the software understands the sort of pictures you take, it can instantly identify faces, right? So I can see here, you know, who's the actual person in the background? Obviously your face is unrecognizable, but we can see our colleague Vidane in the background okay. there. And I can go ahead and actually tag her in the face. But of course as well, I can go ahead and actually tag your face. Wait, so the software recognizes... It recognizes face. facial features. And you can tag those and connect those with your Windows Live community. Are you, are you serious? Yeah, so you can really go ahead. I mean, photos no longer become a static piece of content. Yeah they become a live piece of content which you can integrate your community of people together. And so if I want to go and share this with people, it's very, very easy to go ahead and do. So, you know, there's our picture. We can go ahead and actually turn this into a slideshow. Hey, there we go. Right. But what about sharing with other computers? Mm -hmm. Right, this has been a, an issue in the past when people tend to say, you know what, I want to share my content with you. 
And it's, it's a horrible experience, right? And, and we need to go ahead and actually make that better for people. You're going to have to be a network genius to exactly. share stuff. Exactly. And, and, you know, people, people at home, if you're thinking about your parents, my sister, mm -hmm. you know, they're not like that. So we have a feature in Windows 7 now called Home Group. Okay, now Home Group makes it easy to share content. So we want to go ahead and take the content from this machine and share it over to this machine. Okay. This is the, the computer here, which is being projected onto yep. this screen here. So uh, they do have the same background. So we'll come back to this machine here and we're going to go ahead and create a home group. So click Create Now and it says, what do you want to go ahead and share? Right, so we can go ahead and accept the defaults in this one. Click Create Now. And so it's going through, it's now created a home group, mm -hmm. right? It's given me a password now. That's it, that's all we need to do. We had to click, what, two buttons and change the password, it's done. Let's go over to this machine. Wait, um, that means the group has already been made? It's done. Just done? Like that's that? it, two clicks. Trust okay, me. Well, okay. <laughs> so now we come to this machine, and we'll do the same thing here. We'll go home group, and you can see here the difference is, it's the same screen, but you'll see here, the button says join now. And let's go through and put in our password. If we go ahead here and actually go to, you can see here inside the Explorer here, there's a home group. I can go down to pictures, right? And then there's that picture. Oh, there we go. Right, so we took that picture, we, that picture we took on the camera, we put it onto that machine over there, mm -hmm. established a home group and instantly made it accessible to you over here. So this data is now, now this, this computer right now is reading the data from this computer, right? It's reading it from there. But if we look just behind us here, what we actually have here is an Xbox. Oh, goody. Okay, so we noticed this one's actually pretty popular. So yep. this, this... Pretty popular, yeah. Pretty popular, <laughs> pretty popular yeah. <laughs> So this, this, is, this is a basic Xbox. I mean, you know, if I just sort of click here, you can see that this is, this is the, uh, the dashboard. But what we're actually running here is the Media Center interface. Now, in the past, the way to go ahead and actually get content to this machine was to either copy it to a local hard drive or have the Media Center and sort of suck it down. Yep. What I can do now is actually from a machine is push content to it. So this doesn't have to be an Xbox. Right? This is not Xbox specific. It could be an Xbox. It could be a device like a Roku Soundbridge. And you can see this, this has no real visual interface, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a great way of actually playing music to a speaker system. It could be a digital photo frame, right? All of these different devices, if they support the DLNA standard, they can connect to this. Even a PlayStation 3 has this same sort of standard, so they can actually ex experience this feature. So remember your, your picture back here that we actually had um, in, in our, uh, from our other machine here. Yep. I can take this picture and I've got a feature here called Play To, right? So what I can do is choose the Xbox 360 Media Center Extender and click on that. And what you should see is that picture should come up. Music, on, the music with, with music, music as well. Yeah, music video. <laughs> so, so you can see the actual, your picture streaming up there. So if this is a digital photo frame or okay. something like that, I can go ahead and actually stream that out there. Yep. You know, and the, the complexity to set this up is nothing. All I do is I have the device connected on the network, the computer on the network, it will instantly see the devices and will enable you to start streaming that. Yes. And so I can take things like pictures, I can take, you know, music. So let's say, for example, 1979. Yeah, right, and do that. And you can see it's coming up there on the screen now. So the Xbox isn't Xbox 360 isn't using any resources to sort of like pull it from it's not the computer. Pulling, it's pushing yeah, it's it from pushing. This, this machine. Imagine you're in a social environment with friends and stuff, and they sort of say, "Hey, have you got that album? Yeah, I do. Do you want to put it on?" So in the past, you'd take the CD and go to the machine and maybe put CD in, or maybe you'd go up to the the device itself and scan through. But if you've got a a little machine which is connected up via home group, so you can share the libraries. I can right click on the album and say play to and continue. Yep. Windows 7 really goes ahead and helps enable you to bring that connectivity. Again, we talk about life without walls. Yep. What you've seen here today is basically breaking down those physical barriers between the devices. You're living here now inside a very, very connected environment, which is not just connected, but very, very easy for people to use as well. Excellent. I'm impressed. Thanks a lot, man. Pleasure, man. Come by anytime.